morning, Henry. Good to see you, buddy. How's great. things? Listen, it's great to see you. Um, <laughs> Driving up to the uh, the stadium today just bring back brings back memories really, and um, when I walked in here, it's a it's a warm welcome welcome as always with you guys here. So I'm I'm looking forward to having a look around. There's not much change, but um, some updates here and there. But yeah, it's good to be back. Ten years ago, you were you were here as captain lifting the conference trophy. It doesn't seem well, it does actually seem a long, long time ago. But when you think of it, think about it like that, it's not. Uh, not been so while ago since you were lifting the trophy there. Yeah, listen, it's um, it's fresh in my mind now as I've come back into the stadium, as you're reminding me. But um, fantastic times they were. I mean, ten years ago is a long time ago, and we were just um, talking over some of the times that that actually happened here, and they they were fantastic. And like I said to you, just to be a, a small part of the club's history and to to, to be a small part in getting you back into the, the football league was, was enough for me and to leave the football club in a, in a better place was a, was a great achievement for myself and, and obviously this, this fantastic group of players and staff. Yeah, I mean, we'll go a bit around the stadium and talk about yeah. certain moments from that season. I mean, well, Ron, it was 11 years ago, I think, and you first set foot along these harrowed hall, hallowed halls of uh, Kenilworth Road and um, take you back a little bit. To, the, yeah. to, that, to that time when you, were, you first were signed by Paul Buckle? Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, I, I, when I first came to the ground, um, I was in an R in what to do, whether to sign, because obviously the last club that I was at was Stevenage and the rivalry, etc. The pull of another couple of clubs that obviously wanted to sign me as well, but no regrets. I mean, when I first came through here, um, after an hour of being here, I thought, yeah, this is for me. This is a great challenge. Um, it was a big challenge. I knew it was going to be a big challenge, but it was something that I wanted to take on. And I'm really pleased I did. Yeah. Well, Ronnie, um, famous tunnel here at Kenilworth Road. Good times and bad times here. Supposed to touch on those bad times because that first season you were here didn't exactly go to plan, did it? No, it didn't. But um, like I just said to you, that, that was um, that was good. Good in a way that I was more determined than the team and the football club were more determined to do exactly what we needed to do. I mean, walking down here on Saturday and Tuesday evenings um, were, was a fantastic buzz. Um, but the times where the club expected us to win week in, week out, and it wasn't happening was tough. Like I just said to you, coming through this tunnel when we wasn't winning was not easy. Mm. And sometimes I thought to myself, well, this is, this is tough, but it, it, it added to the fuel and it probably made that promotion even more sweeter. Did you ever think, what have I done? What have I let myself in for that first, that first year? If I said I didn't, I'd be lying to you. Yeah, there were times that come over me that I thought, oh, this is, this is a tougher challenge than I thought. Um, what, what have I done? Not in the sense of the football club, because I absolutely loved it, and the, and the staff members here and the players, I, I did really like it. Um, but at times I thought, this could be tough to get to where I wanted to get to and where I wanted to try and get the club to. But like I said, the person I am, um, how determined I am and how much I wanted to, to make this a success um, made me even more, more fueled for the, for the fight and, then, and I was even more up for it, which was great. Leading into that second season, I mean, we've stopped just here. I think there was this game against Lincoln. I think we were 1-0 down at half-time and one of the fans has yeah. come over to you or someone has been shouting his head off in the first half. You wait until... Yeah. Wait until we turned it around, two goals from Mark Cullen, we won 3-2 and yeah. then you decided to not yeah. have it out with him, yeah. but say, you know, give a little bit yeah. of constructive feedback back to him. You remember that, remember that time? Yeah, what you said? I, I remember it clearly now, even standing here looking there. I mean, uh, the position I played in the team was obviously at right back. So mm. coming over to here, getting the ball back from the crowd and when they're throwing it back at you really hard as if, you, as if to say, sort yourself out. I understand where they're coming from. They're passionate, they want the club to do well, they expect to do well and we wasn't doing great at the time. So it was, it was on us. Um, the only thing I, I said was we had a young team. Um, it wasn't easy even for myself as a, as a senior player and as a captain. It, there was a huge responsibility on us to, to win games week in, week out. And that situation here with the fan, um, rightly or wrongly, I went, went into the obviously not into the crowd, but spoke to the crowd, spoke to that guy and said, listen, we're not doing it deliberately. We're trying our best. I understand where you're coming from, but listen, give us some leeway a little bit. We'll try and get you where we want to get to in, 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 a, nice, in a nice way. Um, and a lot of people are saying now that may have been the turning point to, to the football club rising up the league. 
Whether it was or not, I don't know, but it was a huge turning point because from then on, the, sa the place seemed to, seemed to change. I think, the, I think certainly the fans embraced it. I think even John embraced it. I think that was the start of the, of the huddle yeah. as well and get, inviting a fan onto the pitch to be a bit more part of it, connect everyone together. And, you know, we're fighting for the, you know, for the, for the mutual gain here. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we've invited the fans to the training ground. The, tra the, the fan come to the training ground. We spoke to him. We, we expressed our, what we are trying to do. And I think he, him and the rest of the fans un kind of understood, right, let's get in it. Let's get in this together. We're only going to get up the leagues by the fans and the players and the staff all getting, getting amongst it together. And I think when John used to bring the, the fans into the huddle, it, it did bring us all together and, and it felt more of a, more of a, uh, a unique football club and, and, and it was in it together. And you know for a fact when these fans here get behind you in this environment, in this stadium, there's only one outcome. And in the end, there was only one outcome when we walked out of this tunnel onto this pitch, we knew we was going to win many memorable games of your career here at Kenworth Road, probably none more so than Barnet on New Year's Day uh, 2014. don't think I've ever seen rain like it. I no. don't think Dickie the groundsman's ever dealt with rain like it, but we managed to get through it. Remember that game and, and your particular role as captain that day? Mm, I do remember it. It was a pivotal part of the, of the season. Um, we needed the game to be on um, at home to Barnet. Um, big big game and the, and the weather was absolutely terrible and I, I don't mind saying it now the game probably should have been off uh, I was I was in the referees here from the start trying to get the game on making sure it was on making sure it's played come on ref it's got to be played we, we there's nothing wrong with the pitch even though it's psychologically in my head I knew the pitch was not hardly playable um, it was quite funny because we we played in areas in the corner of the pitches where it wasn't so wasn't so bad so we didn't want to play in the areas that were terrible so the referee called it off but um I'm, I'm really pleased that game uh, went ahead because we ended up winning it and going four points clear, I think, uh, um, as you said. So it was a, it was a big game and, and it was a big turning point, yeah. It was obviously many experiences that the, that the fans have had and, and just touching on that, that fast forwarding, you know, four or five months later, just how important was that Barnet game in the context of, of overall getting, getting us over the line and, and making sure that we'd lift that title in, oh, it's, in Psychologically, it was big um, against Barnet as well. You know, it was, it was a huge game. Um, and to get that game on, to keep the momentum going. Um, and after that, we, uh, I don't, we didn't look back, did we? Um, and and any, any games where you get three points and you, and you know, you think, oh, this, is, this was a big, a, a, a big win. We're, we'll, we'll get over the line now. Um, and we didn't look back. What was it like playing? We talked touched earlier about how how perhaps Kenworth Road wasn't the nicest of places to play when it wasn't going so well. So what was it like on the flip side of that when we're battering teams every week in the conference and and actually performing how you wanted us to perform when you when you yeah. first joined? It was lovely. It's fantastic. The fans are really really good here. Um, it's a tough place to come. Um, and like I just said back there, um, when I walked down that tunnel and come out onto the pitch and the fans are behind you, there was only one winner. Mm. We knew we got into a momentum where nothing was really going to stop us. Um, we, were, we were almost unstoppable at, at times and playing the way we wanted to play. And when, when things are going well here and the fans are up, the opposition crumble. Mm. And that's exactly what happened that season. Um, we, we ran away with it because we were too good on the pitch and also the fans were too good in the stands. Well, Ronnie, here we are with a conference uh, championship trophy. No goals for Luton Town, but one hell of, <laughs> one hell of an honour to lift this thing, wasn't it? Uh, um, I knew you'd get that in. Um, yeah, no goals, but listen... Um, still, it's fantastic to, uh, to lift this trophy for the football club. It was a great honour. Um, and it was a privilege to be honest with you. Um, wasn't just for myself. It was um, it was more for the football club, the fans, and the staff here because there's fantastic people here, like I've said before. Um, and just to help be that small part getting looting into the football league was was enough for me and my family. An outpouring of emotion here. We talked about how difficult the season before was, the issues that yep. not just yourself had, but the rest of the team had in overcoming that kind of. Um, those difficulties on the pitch to be able to, at the end of that, 
conference winning season to, to be able to lift this, but not only lift this, but to get Luton back in the football league. Yeah, yeah. The reason I came here was to to lift that, um, and obviously, I think it was a is a relief. Mm. It was a relief because there were some real tough times through them two years, but there's some a lot of very very good times, and and like we just said uh, earlier on, once we got going. Once the football club got going, we was unstoppable, um, and there was only one outcome, um, and that was to lift that and get Luton into the football league. And as you see now, flying all the way to the Premier League where they deserve to be. And you saw obviously out there when you did lift this, how much of a relief it was for for everybody, not just for for the people like myself that yep. were working there, there at the time, but all of those loyal fans that stuck with us through thick and thin. Yeah, they deserved it. Um, that's a, that's, that was a pull for me to come here. The the, um, the expectation of the football club, the expectation for us to get into the football league, and that that excited me. Um, and the fans, the fans deserve it because listen, they come out in their numbers week in week out, and they was entitled to have their opinion for sure because they paid paid a hard earned money to come and watch. And and I'm just pleased now that they are where they deserve to be. And but like I said before, this was a huge relief to lift this trophy. So Ronnie, back here in the changing room, uh, many a pre-match pep talk given to you by managers down the years. What's it like being back in here as well? Yeah, it brings back, it brings back good memories really. Um, many games for Luton and sitting in here wondering um, what the outcome will be. Um, obviously the first season was tough um, sitting in here because there was many times where it, where it was low. Uh, but then during the second season there was some some fantastic times, especially remember coming in after games, winning, winning. There's no better feeling. Um, the only difference really is the uh, the seating in here that's uh, been put up. Liquor paint as well. A little bit of liquor paint, but I used to sit over in that corner over there. I remember, remember sitting there listening to team talks from from obviously Paul Buckle and, and obviously um, John Steele, uh, ready to go out and and entertain <laughs> as it's such. See so. John still took over um, from from Paul Buckle midway through your first season here. What was what was John like? What did he, and how did he kind of have that influence on what would later go on to become such a successful season for us? I remember it very clearly. Like I, like I said, he came into this change room before we went to uh, away to Braintree on a I think it was a Tuesday night, um, and he was quite clear. He was quite honest on what he wanted. He was. Um, you, everyone knows John Steele is a fantastic guy, and so was so was Terry Has, Harrison and Hakim that worked with him. Um, the thing that John John done for us was was made everything quite simple. Um, like I just said, he knew exactly what he wanted, and and he made it very clear from every different playing position, goalkeeper to to the forwards. When you get it here, this is what you do. We're all on the same the same sheet, so it made it it made it quite easy for us. It was quite. Um, quite refreshing. It was simple in a way, um, but it was good enough to get Luton into the Football League. What did he say to you? What did he expect from the players? Because I, I feel as though in that second season, or your second season, that there was that, there was a winning mentality right through that, through that squad. It was like, we're going to go out there and, and, and give it our all. Yeah, John, like I just said, John's, John was a very nice guy, but, but when, when things needed to be said, he would say it. Um, he'd be very clear on what he wanted um, as long as we would manage the change room because we had quite a few experienced players here and we, we, we in the end managed, managed the change room we knew what he wanted um, so it was quite a simple job for him in the end but he made us feel very welcome as a, as a player as long as you worked hard and, and worked hard for the football club and worked hard for each other um, he would do anything for us um, which was fantastic, and he and he, he kind of became a, a friend as well as a manager. Um, but he made everything very, very clear. We he knew we knew exactly what he wanted, um, day to day, Monday to Monday to Sunday, exactly what he wanted, and it became a routine. And when a manager instills um, the the principles that he wants to play, and the, and the players are on board with it, it's very hard for other teams to to stop that. Uh, as you see in in that season, we was we was quite unstoppable at times, um, but like I said, he was a fantastic manager and and one we all worked very hard for. Was there a moment during that second season we thought, yeah, this is going in the right direction here? Yes, for sure. Um, the Pacific moment, no, but the, the, I, like I said earlier on, when we was in this change room and he was doing his team talks, you get to a point where. 
you almost know you're going to win. Mm. Um, and that, that point is fantastic to be in. Um, teams would come here, we'd go away to, to teams and we'd have more fans at, at, at away games, by the way, uh, than, the, than the home team. What was that like, actually? Was that a strange, I mean, it must be a strange scenario to go into. It was powerful. It was powerful to go out in, in away games and you had more, more, more fans than the, the home team. It was powerful and we, and, and we was in our stride, as you see, we was in our stride and we, we knew it was going to take um, some team to beat us. Obviously, we wouldn't win every game. John would, John would, would say that you're not going to win every game, but you, as long as we'd done what he asked us to do and, what, and we could look each other in the eyes after the game, players and, and, and staff and, and say, listen, I gave my best and, and that was all you could do. But, in the end, we was we like I just said we we was too good, and we knew we knew we was we was good for that level, and we knew we was going to win games. T touched earlier about the the experience that we had in that dressing room, but we also had a, a dressing room full of characters as well. Tell us a little bit about some of your teammates. A lot of characters, a lot of um, a lot of experience. Like I said, um, with some of them, uh, Matt Macker obviously playing centre half. Macca came in um, when Macca came through the doors at um, the training ground. I looked at him. I'm not going to lie, and I thought, oh, he's a strange character. He's a he's a good guy, um, a little bit different on the eye, but a very 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 good player. Um, very good with his feet. Um, he used to love the one where it used to be crossed in, and I'd say to him, head it away, and he'd just chest it down to the goalkeeper from about four yards out, and. Um, he was, he was a big character and a big part of why we'd uh, why we done well. Um, Scotty Griffiths at left back was a, was a strange one, but um, worked with John Steele for a long time, knew what John wanted, and that's what, and that's what John wanted in here. And, and, and Scotty was at Scotty, done, done very well, but done work very well for us. Um, obviously, Pelly, fantastic lad, got still him here. still here, done unbelievably well, an unbelievable character, um, lively. Lively character every day, something we needed. He was energetic, always having a laugh, but a very, good, very good player for that, for that level. And, and as he's shown now, he's still here in the in the, in the Premier League. Luke Guttridge, um, another one that was um, a character, but was a tough character. Um, and when things didn't go well, or when things needed to be said, he would, he would, he would tell you. Um, I and think throughout the. I think Throughout the team, I think there was an element of standards, wasn't there? Yeah. It was like, and I think Luke was one of them. I mean, you probably yeah. a lot yeah. of those, a lot of those players. There was a standard, and if there was, if you fell below that, then yeah. you would be, you'd be told. You'd be picked out. Like I said before, um, we would manage the dressing room ourselves, um, and that's a sign of a of a good manager. Um, he he instilled his instilled his principles, the way he wanted us to play, and the way we wanted us to be off the pitch, the, uh, creating a good environment. And the players, the players stood to that. And, and if anyone fell below them standards, you, you'd get picked out. Um, you'd, you'd get told for sure and you'd get back in line and you'd do the right things. Um, and then it goes obviously to Andre up top, which was, um, you knew for a fact he was going to score week in, week out. He would even, I'd even put balls into him and flick his own, own balls on and go and get after him. He was that quick and he was that good that season that it just that he goes to show what he's done in his career now that was, um, and he's, he's been fantastic. And that's missing out loads of other loads of other characters, but like you just said, the the, the dressing room was very good. Um, obviously, Benno Laws as well. They're still working here at Luton. Some some friends that I've kept in touch with over the years because they're great people, not just good footballers. Um, you were the captain as well. Yeah, a team of captains almost, if 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 you like. But what was it like to to be the captain of this football club? Special. Um, I've I've captained obviously uh, previous clubs. Um, came in as as captain here. Huge responsibility on myself, which I which I enjoyed the responsibility um, to to captain such a, a fantastic football club was was a real honour. Um, but it was a real responsibility. Um, it was tough the first year. I'm not going to lie to you. I've told you that before. It was not easy. Um, there was moments where I could have left the football club because of how hard it got. But I will. The reason I was captain is is because of that. I, I stick by what I wanted to do, and and I managed to do it. The second year was a lot easier because of like we just spoke about the uh, the experience in the in a changing room and the the standards we had, the environment, the coaching staff created made my job a lot easier because I had five or six play other players around me that would do exactly the same job. I just wore the armband out on the pitch at the weekend and got the um, 
the privilege to to lift the trophy, which was which was a, a huge, huge um, moment in my football career and one that I'll remember all these years on. And once the football club got out of that league, as you see, the football club's just gone. Is it crazy? How does it, how does it make you feel like seeing Luton in the Premier League now? Proud. And, and, actually, and also having played a role in doing that. Proud. It's proud. I, I, I have no worries about saying that Luton Football Club's a fantastic football club, even though I've predominantly been at Stevenage. Um, it's, it's a fantastic football club. It's a proud, proud moment. I've been watching the football club all the way since then, and I was watching the final and, and hoping I was going to get into the football league. Because, like I said, everyone here deserves that, deserves that season, and hopefully the, the football club can stay in the Premier League because it, it does deserve it, and the people around here deserve it, and the fans deserve it. So a couple of, couple of months after you lifted that trophy, mm. You were off. Yeah, I was. I was gone. <laughs> um, so yeah. So as soon as we um, finished the season and promotion, I spoke to the football club about extending my stay. Um, they was quite open to extending it, um, but I made the decision to to go back to my old club, um, Stevenage, with my old manager that rejoined Stevenage. I, I made that decision to go back. There was nothing against the football club. Um, I would love to have stayed here, but I thought at the time I need to make a decision. Um, and I thought, I've come here, I had an agenda, I wanted to help get the football club into the football league, and I've done that. So I could walk away happy. Um, I'd love to have played for the football club in the football league, but that wasn't to be, I was, I was, it, it, I was elsewhere. So I, I'm proud of what I've done here. Um, I have no regrets. Um, I have no regrets whatsoever, but yeah, I was, I was on the move straight away back to Steamage. And you're still there as well. Tell us a little bit about what, what, what you're up to now. So, yeah, so I'm still there. Um, been there uh, uh, many, 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 many years now. Seen, seen everything that happens at that football club. And now under 18's league coach. I've been doing that for a good few years now um, and really enjoying it. And re really enjoying that next stage of my, my footballing journey. Still playing part-time at Royston Football Club, which I'm really enjoying as well. So I'm managing the finishing full-time football into part-time football into into 18's management which is which is great because I'm learning what I want to be as a manager when I eventually become a manager of a first team which obviously I, I I want to be in the future so that that's that's the aim you set out to achieve that's the goal um at the moment I'm quite happy with with Stevenage under 18s I'm really enjoying it um coming up against some of me uh, me, the characters that I used to play with, Paul Benson and Alex Lawless, and, and, and there's a lot of players that I've played against that are going into academy football under 18s. But my, my end goal, not end goal, my, my goal is to be a, a football league manager for sure and at the highest level I could possibly be. Um, when that will be, I don't know. Um, at the moment, I'm still playing, I'm still enjoying playing, and I'm still enjoying doing the 18s. So when the time comes, it, I'm sure I'll, I'll know. Well, Ronnie, thank you so much. It's been great. Catching up on, on the old times here 10 years ago, I'd like to thank you on behalf of all the fans for your efforts for those two seasons, in particular one 10 years ago that got us back into the league. So Ron, great to see you and thanks a lot. Thank you very much. I wish everyone here the best um, and I'll be watching, on, watching the games, hoping that um, obviously Luton will stay in the Premier League. I'm sure they will. Top man, thank you. Thank you.